Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today's video is one that's been requested many times. It's a guide to culturing your own fruit flies. I'll show you how to make a new culture with the fruit fly media and everything else you need. But I'll also talk about the different types of fruit flies, how often you have to make new cultures and some thoughts and general tips and tricks. But before we get into that, if you're enjoying my content, the best way to support me is to subscribe to the channel and share it with a couple of friends. That really goes a long way on YouTube. You can also press the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Feel free to also give the video a like and leave a comment as I'll happily respond to any questions you may have. Now, let's get back to the video and we're gonna start up by making some fruit fly media. The media I'm using is called Fruit Fly Porridge in less than a minute and it was popularized on the Swedish forum pilift.se. I will link the original thread in the description in case anyone is interested. The ingredients in this recipe are oats, some Semper fruit porridge apple and pear, which is a Swedish brand so you probably won't find it unless you're Scandinavian, and finally some dry yeast. If you can't find the fruit porridge, I unfortunately can't really help you, but there might be a similar brand you can use, you might find an entirely different fly media recipe online, or you could buy some brand of finished powdered fruit fly media online. I will link a few brands in the description. To make the culture, you will need a plastic cup, something to provide surface area, something to measure the ingredients with, something to mix it up with, and finally a lid, which I will show you later on. I start by adding 3 quarters of a deciliter of fruit porridge, and next I add 1 half deciliter of oats, and finally a little bit of dry yeast. The dry yeast is probably the most important ingredient, and without it the culture will fail in my experience. Then I just mix up the dry ingredients a bit, and then I add water until it has the same consistency as oatmeal porridge. Usually that's one and a half deciliters of water, but this time it became a bit too runny, so I added some extra oats. Many fruit fly medias require boiling water to work, but for this one I use cold water without any issues. Once the media is done, I add a piece of egg carton to provide surface area for the larvae where they can turn into pupae. You can also use coffee filters, some other cardboard or wood wool. Lastly, we're going to need a lid. The lids I've used are just wetex dishcloths, but there are many other alternatives. I just moisten up the dishcloth, squeeze out all the water and secure it on the cup with a rubber band. After a few hours, once it's dried up, it will maintain this shape and you won't even need a rubber band anymore. You can reuse the same lid multiple times for different cultures as well. But let's take that lid off again and add some flies. If you use a medium that requires boiling water, you will obviously have to wait until it cools down, but since I used cold water I can add them right away. I just start shaking the cups like this to make sure none of them escape and then I put a few in there. I currently make two cultures every other week, and I usually do one culture that I seed with a lot of flies, maybe 50 or more, so it produces more flies faster, and another culture that I only seed with like 15 to 20 flies, so it lasts a bit longer instead. I keep the cultures at room temperature, which for me is around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius or around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the flies will start laying eggs which will turn into larvae and eventually pupate. In about two weeks, new flies will start to hatch, or the culture will boom as I like to call it, and that's when you can start using the culture to feed the frogs with for a few weeks until it eventually dies off. Now, let's talk a bit about the different types of fruit flies. There are two species commonly used in the hobby, Drosophila melanogaster and Drosophila hydei. Unfortunately, I don't have any good pictures to show you, but the melanogaster is small and like brown yellowish, while the hydei is significantly bigger and usually black, unless you buy the golden hydei for some reason, but they're not very common. I only keep the smaller melanogaster at the moment, and it works really well. Most art drugs are fine on either melanogaster or hydei, 
but some froglets and thumbnail frogs might need melanogaster, while larger frogs and geckos might prefer the bigger hydei. Aside from the size, the main difference is that melanogaster will develop much faster. A melanogaster culture will start booming with flies around 2 weeks after it was made, while a hydei culture will take 3 to 4 weeks. This is the reason why I stopped breeding hydei. When they develop slower, it takes longer until you're done with the culture, so it gets more time to start smelling. And I also just didn't see any point in breeding hydei when all of my animals did just fine on melanogaster. The most important thing when culturing fruit flies is to get a proper routine going. This is where fruit fly breeding can get stressful for many dart frog keepers. It's really easy to postpone making a new culture for a few days, and all of a sudden it's been well over a week, and now your old cultures will die before the new one starts producing, and you'll have days in between when you can't feed your frogs, and now you have to get a replacement culture, and so on. I've been there myself a few times, and it's very stressful. Therefore, it's important to get a good schedule going, and to make sure to stick to it. I also highly recommend starting your first fruit fly cultures a few weeks before getting your first frogs, because there's a fairly big risk that some of your first cultures will crash. I also recommend having a backup plan, such as another dart frog keeper or a pet store close to you, where you can get an extra culture if it's necessary. A little warning for me is to be careful in the summer. Then, there's a big risk that the cultures will dry out, so it's a good idea to miss them a bit sometimes or move them to a room that doesn't get too hot. It's very common to see a lot of people needing new flies during the summer months because their cultures had crashed. It's always good to have a backup plan in case this happens. The schedule I have for making fruit fly cultures is that whenever my most recent cultures start hatching, I'll make new ones within a few days. So with melanogaster, I make new cultures roughly once every two weeks. Then I can use the old culture to feed with for a few more weeks until it eventually dies off. If you only have Hydei, remember that their development is slower, so you might have to get some other routine going if you want a constant supply of flies, otherwise there might be gaps in the cycle without any flies to feed with. When it comes to the number of cultures you need, that will vary greatly depending on how many frogs you have, the frog species and age, and how many flies each culture produces for you. I have around 30 dart frogs and I only make two cultures once every other week, and in the summer, when I have a lot of froglets, I usually make like 5 cultures every other week for 60 frogs. That's quite little, but I also have a lot of success with my fly cultures and I get more than enough flies. I can assure you that none of my frogs go hungry. More than half of my frogs are also thumbnail frogs or froglets. If I had 30 adult Dendrobates tinctorius, I would probably need a lot more cultures. With that said, it's better to make too many cultures in the beginning, rather than too few. Make a few extras and you can experiment a bit with different medias and so on. What works for me might not work for you. I've made several small adjustments of my own to the original advice I was given, and I'm sure many of you will as well. Well, that was it for my guide to breeding fruit flies. If you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and share it with a couple of people. As I said earlier, it's the best way for you to support me and it's completely free. You can also press the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future uploads because I have a lot of exciting videos planned. If you have any questions or topics you would like to see videos about, just let me know in the comment section. If you want to see more of my animal room, feel free to follow me on Instagram at gecko underscore geek 6 Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.